What's up everybody? My name is Lehu and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcast Across Worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehu Superfina. Today we are going to review Soma Spider So What. And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing Soma Spider So What episode 24 the finale the season finale of soma spiders so what and it was great it answered my questions it lived up to my expectations it just felt short oh it felt short i was like i need more what i like about this episode is sometimes in this show things that are getting good things that you want to happen happen at the end of the episode you know you get really excited they do that build up really good build up build 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 at the end the climax is at the end but but in this one the one that one part that we wanted to see was Komoko's evolution and it happened in the beginning yeah. So happy about that. So I did have a question of how will Komoko survive getting hit by Abyss Magic? Because Komoko has immortality and the only way to destroy her soul is using Abyss Magic. Or is using, is if she gets hit with Abyss Magic. And at the end of the episode where she's fighting Ariel in the present, uh, yeah, when she's fighting Ariel, Ariel used Abyss Magic, which I don't know why. I don't know why she did that. Maybe Body Parallel Mind wanted to encourage Komoko to do something. I'm not too sure where the logic was. Or it could be that Ariel, you know, she got super competitive and she took it a bit too far and forgot that Abyss Magic was going to kill her. <laughs> but anyways... Komoko was able to survive because she laid eggs and input one of her parallel minds. So when the body that died from the abyss magic that Ariel casted, Komoko was able to revive herself by waking up in that egg that she laid, that she implanted that parallel mind in. I was like... You can do that? That's possible? What? And I'm like wondering, okay, which parallel mind did she use? Because she had two others. Body was in Ario, and she had, she had the other two, the magic ones. And I was like thinking, okay, so how many times did Komoko do this? How many? And wait, <laughs> I got questions because, okay, if one of the parallel minds was in the egg how was she able to fight and how soon does the parallel mind have to go into the egg and like what's the process here i'm very curious about it and i'm wondering if can ariel do that too has ariel done it before i know that kamoko said that she got that skill from her mom but ariel's her grandma so i'm pretty sure that ariel has that same skill too and then, bra, Ponymous does the same thing too, but we'll talk about that later. And then we got to see Kumoko's evolution transformation. And they kind of look like, you know, those magical girl transformations, but not so sparkles, diamonds, hearts, and whatnot. It was very like transform, new me, new time kind of thing. <laughs> and I like how in this transformation that even though she has like that blank face, her mind is still the same. I did wonder about that whenever I saw Lady Shio. I was like thinking, Lady Shio looks like she has no personality. She's so quiet. Like, did we did we lose our Kumoko? The upbeat, bubbly, goofy Kumoko? But no, we didn't. It's just that she has a hard time talking. Because if we remember when she was talking to Administrator Gilly Gilly, 
that she was so out of practice talking with people that it was really slow and awkward. So I'm thinking, even though Kumoko transformed, she still has the、um, lack of ability of using her oral motor skills. <laughs> But she still has the same narration, talking to herself in her head, bubbly personality. I'm really happy about that, and I'm really happy that she still does like her like goofy poses, like. When she was in the fight scene and she made a good laugh, she's like ten points, and she did like a pose too. <laughs> I'm really glad she still has that. Guarantee there's going to be a season two, so I'm thinking we're going to see more fight scenes with Kumoko in this new form. I'm really excited to see how she's thinking and posing in that. Lady White form. Yes, we know she is Lady White. It's been confirmed. She looks like she she is it. I oh finally, finally. And then、uh, another confirmation is when Lady White showed up 15 years later. She showed up to the reincarnates, her classmates, Filmos Sensei, and apparently she looks like Wakaba. She looks like what she did before the, the reincarnation. I'm like, really? I mean, <clears throat> yeah. Like, I'm okay. The reason why I'm like, really, is because the hair is so different. The face. Okay, Wakaba. She had bangs. She covered her, the top part of her face. I. <laughs> and whenever we did see her, it was just just parts of her face. Was. Wakaba that pretty? I'm wondering if that's why Faye was bullying her because Wakaba was like super pretty. She was jealous, or she wanted to be friends with Wakaba, but then Wakaba was like, "Don't talk to me," kind of thing. Let me do my thing. Filmos, <laughs> remember Filmos? Filmos was saying that Wakaba died, right? According to her roster, I guess it looked like that her name got crossed off, and she saw Wakaba. She's like, "No way! It's not possible." But girl, you see her. You see that face.、Mm -hmm. Oh, what if? Okay, I just thought of this. What if when Kumoko died from the abyss magic, that counted as a death? Oh, is that why the name got crossed off? That would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. <laughs> But besides that, everybody was shocked that that was.、Um, Wakaba, Lady Shield, who looked like Wakaba, and I don't remember if Faye reacted because Faye was the one who was super concerned because she felt bad that she used to bully Wakaba, and now that she sees Wakaba in present time, like she thought Wakaba died, and she was sad about hearing about the death. That scene, I'd be interested in seeing, like their interaction, their talking. I mean, they're both monsters, so they could talk with their minds, right? <clears throat> Anyways, besides that, <laughs> I'm just so excited about this episode. The the fight scenes, the fight scenes. The reason why I'm talking about that is because I'm talking about 15 years later. 15 years later had fight scenes. 15 years in the past had fight scenes. <clears throat> the fight scenes did look better. The CG did look better. Oh my gosh! I think the wait was worth it because. The fight scene that really needed to look good was in Kumoko's time, 15 years ago, when she's fighting against Potamus. Oh, that shiny bopo! Yes, I call him that. I always call him that on my TikTok. I made a whole <laughs> video calling him that. <laughs> so she comes to save baby Sophia. I remember in one of my reviews, I kept saying that Potamus was trying to kill all the reincarnates because I base it off of the elves trying to assassinate Baby Bloodsucker. I thought they were trying to assassinate her. It looked like that. I I felt killing intent. Okay, so I assumed Potamus was trying to kill all the reincarnates based off of Sophia. Okay, I was proven wrong. He wasn't trying to kill the reincarnates, 
but he was trying to kill baby Sophia. But the thing is, okay, okay, this is where it gets a little weird. I think the, the, the chain of order of the story is kind of off. It's it's kind of weird. There was like no killing intent, and then there was killing, and then when Ponmus announced that he wanted to kill Sophia, that was the official killing intent. My question is, during that time between kidnapping and then killing, why were the elves killing the humans? Were they just killing because they could, because there was like a conflict going on, and they wanted to make it look like that the other humans that were invading killed Sophia's family, and then they're gonna take Sophia? Like, well, where's the logic in that? I'm. I don't think I'll ever get the story, but you know, I'm, I got questions. I'm just wondering. I speculate. You know how much I speculate. But anyways, besides that, Sophia, she's like scared. She doesn't want to die. She doesn't want Marizophis to die. And so she fights Marizophis and Marizophis transforms. I did wonder when he was going to transform. I did have a inclination that he was going to transform during the invasion, protecting, survival of the fittest, or fight or flight kind of thing. I did think it was going to happen like that. And I do like how it was done when he's trying to protect Sophia. He's trying to protect her. He's like holding her on his dear life. He's on the verge of dying. And then Sophia just bites his neck and then a skill activates and then he transforms. It wasn't like a very big transform, like blowing up kind of thing, ballistic, like aura, like ah, Super Saiyan kind of thing from Dragon Ball. No, it was more like transform, ears grow, other parts of the body transform, grow and whatnot, then fight. I like that. And then Pomus comes in, he's like, okay, I'm gonna kill Sophia because she's gonna be a threat in the long run. He's about to kill her. And then because Komoko, she used clairvoyance, she saw what was going on, she did the teleportation thing, and then she got there, she punched Pomus. Oh, that was so satisfying. It was, oh. That was a very good scene. They showed that in the trailer and we saw it again in this episode. It still looked good. And this fight scene was so smooth. Even though Kamoka was saying that she had a hard time moving her body because she's got like the human body at the top and she's got the fighter body at the bottom. You know, that balance is kind of off. She just transform, evolve. So she's not used to moving the body. She thinks she's moving slow, but they are moving so fast, so quick, so nimble. It all oh, those fight scenes were so good, especially when they did like those matrix moves where it gets all slow-mo kind of thing. So good. Oh, if these fight scenes didn't look as good last week, I'm glad they postponed it because, oh, I think I've been really mad if they made these fight scenes look bad. I think I would. And then we learn that Potamus was a robot? Like what? What? There is mech, something mechanical going on even back then? Oh my goodness. So we learned that Potamus also can do the same thing as Kumoko. He, apparently he has robot clones stashed away and he just you know can inputs his mind in them so my question is where is Ponmus's real body what does it look like is uh does he have parallel minds how many parallel minds does he have what's the story what's going on back to the fight scene Ariel comes in, she stops the fight, she turns to Pomus, like, what are you doing here? And Pomus is like, that's a good question. And then Ariel gets irritated because she's not getting her answers. And then she just destroys his body. <laughs> and she's like, well, that's what I'm going to do to your real body later on. So she knows that he uses robots as substitutes and such. Oh, speaking of that, that's how we know. That's how we found out that Ponimus is using these robots to keep himself alive. That's why 15 years later when Sophia like cut off his head, that was actually a robot. So it's like, okay. Anyways, Aria's like, hi, what's up? And apparently Kumoko didn't know that body pair of little mine was inside of Aria. And then Aria's like explaining everything. So I'm like, oh, thank God. Thank God there's communication going on. And Kumoko's like, oh, okay. And Aria's like, 
Okay, let's Ben, like you look like a good a partner, a good companion. You would be really helpful in assisting me to save the world because Potamus is part of the world end and I want to kill Potamus. I want to save the world. Let's do this. And Kumok is like, sure, all right. And they go off into the sunset, banding together with Mary's office and Sophia. And they change the scene to present time to what they're group looks like now 15 years later with some additions and such and that was the end of the episode the end and it's like oh my gosh season two is gonna be so good i think i'm gonna do a separate video um speculating theorizing what season two is gonna be about because y'all there's so much material to base off of this episode this last scene oh so good, so good. And that's my review of Summer Spider So What episode 24 season finale. What did you think about that episode? All the stuff that we talked about in this video and such. And what did you think about the video? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Discord link is available in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People who watch these videos do like to stop by the stream, have that one-on-one -on -one real time conversation. You guys are more than welcome. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We are available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Superfina channel reviewing Soma Spider So What episode 24 season finale. Hope you guys like this video and I will see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.